Our scripture reading this morning is Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and we're skipping some verses and continuing with verses 53 through 56. Hear now the word of the Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on the, their feet from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Now we jump to verse 53. When they had crossed over the Sea of Galilee, they landed at a place called Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May and technology have had a battle, and so I'm working off of handwritten notes. I hope I remember everything for your benefit, and so I don't embarrass myself. I want you to think... I don't know if any of you are never TV watchers, so I'm going to try to connect this to, to things that we experience in life. Uh, but I want to talk about a TV show called The Amazing Grace. Amazing Race. Have any of you seen that program? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Okay, let's talk about a uh, two-by-two scavenger hunt. Have any of you ever been on a scavenger hunt? Well, Jesus sent the disciples to go preach. They went by pairs, and wherever they went, they had directions given by Jesus about what to do and the authority they had. And so at the beginning of this scripture passage I just read, you find out that they've been and done what they were going to do, and they're back. They've gathered together, and they're there with Jesus. Now, I don't know if they all arrived at the same time, but if they did, Jesus had them talk to him. Have you ever prayed telling what you knew the Lord already knew about, but you had to get it out of your system? No one was around to tell, or you just needed to say it in prayer. The Lord listened to his disciples. He listened as they said, well, this happened in that village. And when one pair of disciples were done, another pair of disciples would describe, well, we went into such and such a place, and you know what? They didn't want us there. And so the disciples did exactly as Jesus told them to do, do you remember? They took off their sandal and they wiped or shook off the dust of that town as a witness. And then perhaps another pair of disciples share their experiences. 
and, and so on until all six pairs of the 12 disciples have told Jesus everything, what does it say here? All that they had done and taught. We shared what you said. Some of us remember uh, many of the early verses in the different gospels. They shared. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What else might they have shared? They shared how to live in a way that doesn't harm anyone, but blesses all kinds of people. And as they're sharing their story, and Jesus is there, all kinds of people want to come up. They want to they know what's happening. They, they know what Jesus can do. And so it's a crowd. If you've ever watched a, a famous person arrive somewhere, whew, a whole lot of people come. And, you know, they almost can't stand uh, because the people want to see them, want to shake hands, want to touch, want to, want to hear what they have to say, or some of them want to talk about themselves. And all of that probably happened with Jesus. And maybe if, if Jesus is busy with one person or several people, maybe they tell the disciples who have just come back from this sort of apprenticeship training where they tried out preaching and healing and casting out demons. So there's a lot of activity going on. And Jesus sees all this activity and he, he looks at his disciples, perhaps at a pause in the crowds. Come away with me. Let's get to a quiet place so you can rest from all that you've been doing. And so they get in a boat. They're right there uh, near the Sea of Galilee, uh, perhaps in the southwestern side, if, if you want to compare it to a, a lake near here, uh, Indian Lake, perhaps they were somewhere between Lakeside and Russell's Point, Lakeview, excuse me. Is that the name of the community? Lakeview. I hope I get my rights correct with my lefts. I, someone told me that I was talking about driving and I, I said a left line when I should have said a right line that I my, allowed my car. I'm sorry, that's another sermon. You'll have to find it on YouTube. So here they are at this southwest, we believe, area of the Sea of Galilee, and they're going to get in a boat, and they're going to try to get to a quiet place. And so they probably row, and while they're rowing to get to that place, they're on the shore. The people see them. They're close enough to see. It's not a huge, huge lake, and they're, they're going to go somewhere where they think it's going to be quiet and deserted. Do you like to do that sometimes? Do you like to get away from it all? And perhaps, what do they say? Decompress. Jesus wanted the disciples to decompress. Perhaps to relax and, and get renewed and refreshed in Jesus' presence. Does he get that chance? No. Instead, the people are watching and they're they're. They're following, I see the boat, there it is, and they're following, and they want to be wherever Jesus is going to be when he gets there, and so that happens. They don't get that time by themselves, their, their rest is interrupted. I don't know what the disciples were thinking. Jesus, you said... You said you were going to lead us to a quiet place so we could have some rest, but there's a bunch of crowds. There's a bunch of people there. And Jesus doesn't get upset. He doesn't tell the crowd, get away from here. 
we, we need time alone. He doesn't do that. It says he had compassion. Now, when you think of compassion, you, you think of uh, how you th think about what's happening or how you feel about what, what's happening. In the original language that the New Testament is written, in the Greek, it talks about a part of your body, uh, basically the area around your spleen. The, the, it was deep what Jesus felt. He felt compassion. Whatever their need was, it, I could just imagine if Jesus were standing here, he would look at your faces and he would be aware of something happening in your life that you're waiting either for a blessing or for a cure for some sort of healing. And, and you want a response from the Lord for the, whatever that is. And, and there he is. He, he's aware of all of that somehow through the Holy Spirit, his connection with God the Father. And he has compassion. He wants to meet their need. And it says, as he looked at them, that it was as if they were in a driverless car. Have you heard stories about driverless cars? They're supposed to be working right and they don't always. There's no one at the wheel. And sometimes we are like that in our lives. We are not even present at the wheel of whatever vehicle we're journeying on. Jesus is the shepherd. They are the lost sheep. He, he knows they need him, and he wants to meet their need. And it says he began to respond to their spiritual needs. He taught them. He taught them many things. We're not told what those things are because Mark is a gospel of happenings, things happening one right after the other. But at this moment, he's teaching this crowd. Now, the scripture passage for today skips over what he does next, where he feeds almost 5,000, maybe much more, if, because it says men in our Bible. So maybe there's women and children also. Perhaps some estimates are 15,000 people. And he feeds them miraculously. And then he sends the disciples as he goes up a mountain. He sends his disciples and they have trouble. And he walks on the water toward them later. And they're afraid. But they end up on a different part of the Sea of Galilee. And guess what happens? He's in the boat, they get to shore, but what do they see on the shore? Another crowd. The disciples had a change of scenery. They got in the boat a couple times and they, they, they had a, a change of action, a change of pace perhaps, some trouble with the storm that Jesus, when he gets in the, perhaps in the boat, it stops. But here they are, another crowd, more people that, that need something. The people recognize Jesus. And then, do you know what happened? Something touched their hearts. They decided that they knew, I know so and so can't get around as well as when they were younger. I'm going to go get them. And perhaps another set of people says, we know, <laughs> let's, let's say Joe, Joe needs help getting to Jesus. So they go get Joe and they bring him. All kinds of people bring others, whether they're on mats or they just need help 
walking along to get to Jesus. And I want you to see a word in, uh, in verses 55 and 56. In 55, they took all these people wherever they heard Jesus was. And in 56, and wherever he went, wherever. I want you to think of that word because they came to wherever Jesus was. Jesus comes to wherever we are. Jesus meets our needs where we are. Not always the way we expect the needs to be met, but Jesus is present. What's the word? Wherever. Wherever. And then it says villages, towns, or countryside, and marketplaces. So as I was driving the other day, I haven't found it yet, but I've heard of Wenger's, and I saw the sign for it. Wenger's would be that one of those country markets, farm stand perhaps, or villages, just like Big Springs or West Mansfield. All kinds, maybe only a little collection or a hamlet, a group of houses. Then there are places like that on the Logan County map. Can you help me with the name of some? There used to be more where these places are. Walnut Grove. Walnut Grove. Give me another. Harper. Some others. North Greenfield. Little spots in the road, wherever Jesus went, he sought to meet people's needs. I got plenty of time. That's what I just checked. And wherever Jesus was, they brought those people. And as they came, maybe they heard about that woman with the 12-year issue or a hemorrhage, the issue of blood. And what she said to herself as she reached to touch just one of those four tassels on, on his robe. If I could just touch. That's what they were trying to do. If they could just get close enough to touch Jesus, they knew they would be healed. Now, healing is different than magic. Did you know that? Now, in magic, usually somebody a magician, a sorcerer, or whatever, they have to say something, an incantation. That, that wasn't necessary. But what was necessary? They had to come to Jesus. They were in deep need. And they had to do something because of their faith. They had to touch. Now, Jesus isn't present. Jesus in a robe is not here for us to touch the hem of his garment. That's what prayer is for. Lord, help me to reach. Help me to touch you for my healing. And it says, and all, that's an important word, and all who touched him were healed. Is there anything in our way keeping us from touching Jesus or allowing him to touch our hearts and our lives? There's a sense that the people are learning from Jesus that, that care and compassion that they had for one another to bring others to Jesus. And we pray that we are as caring and as loving about bringing people to Jesus to hear God's word. A lot happened in this passage. And I, it took me a while because I could read all of this. It, it, it seems commonplace when I read the Gospels. And yet, there's so much there 
They go from place to place, a deserted place, in the boat. They go to towns, they come ashore, Gennesaret, uh, a region, wherever I've said that. Villages, cities, farms, marketplaces, farm stands, if you will. Jesus was there. They were walking, they were rowing, people were rushing, and people were reaching. The disciples reported to Jesus. Needy people came near. The disciples were near exhaustion. And there were many who were ill, having various sicknesses. The fame of Jesus made him very popular, which is a contrast to his reception in his hometown of Nazareth. His hometown of Nazareth were scandalized by him. But all these other people in all these other places, they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. They wanted to touch and be touched by Jesus. We have a challenge in the passage. What can we do to bring others? What will we do if our rest have you ever, some of you that work in a profession, you, you, you go somewhere on vacation or you're somewhere where it's not a work day, it's, it's not during regular hours of work, and yet someone needs you to, to help them uh, with something that you can do and your rest, your vacation is interrupted. Has that been anyone's experience? I don't know how you or I might respond. I know how I have. I'm some, sometimes told I'm a little bit abrasive and grumpy when I think it's my time to rest. I get phone calls. You get them too. And it's a salesperson. Sometimes at the least time for you to respond. And, and I've been advised to just be pleasant or just hang up. Uh, if Please forgive me if you call me and I don't know your phone number and I start with my grumpy voice. Who are you and what do you want? I'm sorry that, that these telemarketers cause us to act this way. Lord, help me be more kind and loving and speak with compassion. I'm reviewing my notes and at the, this moment, I can't think of anything else to share about this passage. So I pray that the Lord will add to the scripture you've heard and the words I've tried to help explain it. Let me uh, leave you with this blessing. Lord God, we are your people. We thank you for your presence, your power, your goodness and grace in our lives. And we ask, Lord, that you shine your face upon us and give us peace. This we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people say, Amen. Amen.